Hey, I'm Slackster from MyBitbox, and uh, today I wanted to do a little video blog talking about how to process lots of different events and time in a small microcontroller system without a embedded operating system. Um, one of the tools that I've used before is um, structures of bit fields to process different events. Uh, if you have a structure and a flag in that structure that's a bit to indicate when time has uh, a certain time has occurred one second half a second things like that then you can process uh, different algorithms and um, communications and things like that uh, very deterministically so what I have is I have a embed processor and that is a um, tool for rapid prototyping with microcontrollers it's a 40 pin dip plug right into a breadboard doesn't even need a power supply it plugs right into C to USB and you can write programs on their IDE which is in a web browser and download them directly to the processor and, and test out uh, theories and, and code on, a, on a, an actual microcontroller, an ARM based core very very rapidly. So as you can see I've created a little demo program, main loop demo here in the embed uh, IDE. The first file that we're going to take a look at in this program is defs.h and in defs.h what I've done is created a, a type def of two bit field structures. Um, the first one has two single bits defined in it for two flags for the system and this would be the status register of the entire system and the second one is a time based bit field that has flags for one millisecond, one hundred milliseconds and one second and that's defined as sys time and any source file that includes this defs.h file will have access to these system uh, structures. So in system.c what we have is we have a definition of an ISR, uh, an interrupt service routine. The idea of this is that uh, this ISR is called every millisecond and what we do is we set the flag for the system time one millisecond to be true because one millisecond has elapsed and then we increment a counter. Uh, when that counter gets to above 100, what we do is we increment, we set the 100 millisecond flag to true because 100 milliseconds has elapsed. Set another counter and then we go up from there. After 10 100 millisecond counts, we have a full second. And then we can do a one minute counter and, and even an hour counter and things like that. So this interrupt service routine is called and it keeps track of all the time within the system. Now these flags are used throughout the system. If we go back to main, what we can see is that we also include this defs.h and we include the system.h to get access to the ISR. The embed doesn't, it has timers and they're called tickers. Okay, So I've defined a ticker object called timer1 and that is what we've set up in the system.c file and we set that up to run and fire every one millisecond. We also have a digital out which is uh, a single LED on the embed board and I call that heartbeat and so what I do is I set the initial value of that heartbeat to true and then I go into this main loop. The idea is, is that this while one never exits. So in this, in this main loop what you can do is you can do uh, all the sorts of things your system needs to handle um, such as you are you know, reading and writing and things like that. But then also what we do is we take a look and we check for these time flags. So as you can see here we check to see if the one millisecond time flag is set and if so we call the one millisecond routine or do some sort of processing right here in the if statement if it's something simple. So we have uh, checks for the one millisecond, the hundred millisecond and the one second. And then we have these functions which are defined down here and in the one millisecond and hundred millisecond we would do something. And what I've set up is in the main one second routine, I've set the heartbeat digital output to toggle between on and off. So when we actually compile and run this and download it to the embed, what we should see is we should see the one LED toggle every one second from on to off. And deterministically, this is not going to run out of, you know, run out in the weeds and, and not execute. This should happen every one second, no matter what. So what we do is we download the file, compile and download it, I save it, and then I run a script to actually download it to the embed, and when we reset it, you can see that we have a one second clock tick, and the LED is flashing. Also I think it bears mentioning that the reason that we do 
uh, that we set flags in the ISR as opposed to handle uh, the processing right there. So we want the ISR to be very fast. This is a very uh, a simple example. All we do is toggle an, actual, an LED. But imagine if this were a algorithm processing kickoff or a, um, a sampling uh, of, of temperatures on an analog to digital um, uh, piece of hardware in the processor. Or uh, serial communication with SPI or I2C or some other interface. That takes time and what we want to do is we want to start that and then we want to return and we want to leave the rest of the processing up to uh, the other the other subsystems in the processor. So what this while loop becomes is it becomes a um, an idle loop. So the UART can if there's no UART information and if there's no time information, this while loop just sits there and runs. So the majority of the time the processor is idle. And uh, let's say that there was a algorithm or a or a um, character came in over the serial port, we want to be able to process that and not worry about, oh, are we still stuck in our, you know, ISR? Did, you know, did the, did the 100 millisecond routine return because what we did is kicked off a, you know, a 10 millisecond algorithm in there. So these flags can be used to kick off different things. You can use these flags within other source files to, you know, local variables as opposed to system-wide variables. And they're just very, very useful for small, smaller systems that, that don't have a core operating system uh, or RTOS or anything else uh, that you would think of. So that's it for this video blog. Uh, hopefully it was helpful and uh, can help you in future projects. Check back to mybitbox.com in the future for some more videos and how-tos. Thanks a lot.